because you can put out so much music so easily. Mm-hmm. People forget to market it. People forget to create concept around it or at least make a connection with the fan base to make sure they understand what those concepts are. Mm-hmm. Because as much as we like to think that people are just going to like dig deep, listen to all the lyrics, try to get a concept, or you can feel like you're being straightforward, people can't see what's in your mind. Mm-hmm. They just can't. What's up, what's up? It's Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday. Full episodes on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you stream your podcast. Now, if this is your first time, what is No Labels Necessary? With no labels, baby. You, you, you can't be put in a box. There are no labels. We're talking about for the artists, the entrepreneurs, people who really just break the rules out here now. Getting straight to the topic today, though, we got something very special for you because the industry is in flux. It's saturated. There's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of competition. Right. Mm. There's this stat that 38 million tracks on music streaming services were played zero times in 2022 Ooh, in 2022. All right, 38 million tracks on music streaming services were played zero times in 2022. That's crazy, right? But there's a reason for that. And then we got some other points along the same lines, all right? A lot of people are having a lot of issue with content, especially music content these days. So first of all, is that stat surprising to you, Ja'Cory? No, I think the stat quantified what we could always feel but we didn't have enough numbers to to prove it, right? I agree. Yeah, I agree. And we're going to show you the way up out of this and how you have to build for the future by the end of this episode. So we're not just going to speak on these problems, but the future does look bright for people who follow a very specific way of building out their brand. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, again, like you said, 38 million, zero streams. It's not surprising. Not surprising. At but all. we tend to kind of ignore what's not happening because we're only going to pay attention to music that we're listening mm-hmm. to, the music that we see. So I might see, okay, there's a lot of songs that got a thousand streams, but you don't even account for the songs that you don't see that have zero streams because you just don't see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we're in this position through just the work we do that well, like, you, you come across it. You know what I'm saying? Like I've seen artists that I found, you know what I'm saying, or they have DM'd me and things and I go look at them and I can see that, you know what I'm saying? Or I have family members in real life that make music and I, I know what the <laughs> I know what the Spotify accounts and the YouTube accounts are looking like, right? So I, I, I think there's a lot of different pieces of context that have kind of made me feel this way for a minute, but to have a number on it is different. Right. 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 Because I would I, I don't know thirty eight million people. You know what I'm saying? But it's not, I was like, oh, the, the 10, 15 I know like this are, are in that stat. <laughs> <laughs> now, just to add a little color to this conversation, mm-hmm. I'm going to play this clip by Ray Daniels. He's a music exec, been in the game for a long time. For the, those of y'all who do not know, just check this out. I think that streaming has made the music business lazy. Mm-hmm. I think streaming has made artists lazy. Because it takes nothing to upload a song. Mm-hmm. So everybody talks about 100,000 songs being uploaded on Spotify. But can we just talk about how 97,000 of them are terrible? Mm-hmm. That like part. No, I'm just being honest. Because 97,000 of them didn't have any thought put into it. Yeah. Didn't have a producer in the room. Mm-hmm. Didn't have, weren't thinking about how the audience is going to react to it. Big point right there. Great point. Which is actually a silver lining for many artists, right? Yeah, we got 38 million tracks with zero streams, but you're not competing with most of these artists, Yeah, right? Yeah. Not if you're trying to take this seriously. You're actually putting in the work. You're actually listening to stuff like our podcast, Party Communities. You're investing, putting and money doing in it. your career. And doing it. And Gotta doing it. Listening and doing it. And doing it. Listening <laughs> and doing it. You know, Papa Corey putting it. <laughs> Making sure y'all discipline yourselves. But... Like, you really are competing with all these people. Some people are probably just throwing it out there for a hobby. Let mm-hmm. me see if it works, yep. right? Yep. Uh, like, so there's legitimately the number is still big, but it's not that big for most of you, right? With that being said, even among the serious people, there's some quality issues. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And 
that just means you got you you might be at a different stage. Some people are unaware of the quality. Some people are just early in developing, right? So that cuts out some more people depending on where your music is. Still, that number is large. I don't know what that number is. Uh, that number is, and this is when we get to the issue today, which is addressed uh, specifically what Ray Daniels is talking about. Now, like, what's just the approach? Like, because you could put out so much music so easily. Mm-hmm. People forget to market it. People forget to create concept around it or at least make a connection with the fan base to make sure they understand what those concepts are. Mm-hmm. Because as much as we like to think that people are just going to like dig deep, listen to all the lyrics, try to get a concept, or you can feel like you're being straightforward, people can't see what's in your mind. Mm-hmm. They just can't. Like there's some songs they're gonna capture all that, and you got the people like Kendrick Lamar where their fan base is gonna like really analyze word for word. Most people don't have a Kendrick type of fan base. Even yeah. people who yeah. got strong fan bases don't have fans that are listening that hard. Yeah. All right. And then secondly, still, you have a vision in your mind or a feeling, right, in your body when you're communicating your music, mm-hmm. and that doesn't always translate. So if you don't bring the world that that music should be introduced to, divide and take those steps it could be missed yeah quick second have you ever seen an artist catch some traction and then they start to move the numbers start to grow they might even go viral but then fast forward a year from now somehow their numbers haven't really grown that much they dropped back close to the same monthly listeners they had before the traction and viral moment well that's because you have to know how to convert those moments into careers. And we've done this again and again with not only songs, but artists. And so has J.R. McKee, who's been a part of helping artists like Lil Durk, Rod Wave, Justine Scott, and Money Long. And we just did a collab where J.R. McKee does a step-by-step breakdown of how he took Money Long from zero to millions of monthly listeners and winning a Grammy over Beyonce, Mary J. Blige, and Jasmine Sullivan. Check out this breakdown while we still have it up. You can check it out at www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Don't forget the www or it won't work. Again, that's www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Back to the video. My, I get it how he can see the industry is getting lazy and it goes directly into something that a young boy stated as well. So we're going from old head to young boy. <laughs> OG to young G. I don't know how young this dude is, but you could tell he's pretty young. Uh, he's made some commentary as well. And this is like from a fan perspective, and every artist should be aware of this perspective from fans, right? As much as y'all hear people like us talk, like we are marketers, so we always try to keep ourselves in a, in a fan's perspective as much as possible. But don't y'all forget to listen to fans as well. Like not even your own fans all the time, but just like the overall mm-hmm. fan sentiment in the marketplace. So check this clip out right here. And this fan is telling artists what they're doing wrong today. Do you guys remember like back in the day when you could name people's discographies? When you could like compare albums and see which one was better? Yeah, the days of that, it's done because it's impossible to do that. Like I could rank my top five Drake's discography right now. We could compare and see which albums are our favorite Kendrick albums. We could do the same with Nicki as well. But it's nearly impossible to do that when the artist drops five times a year. How am I supposed to enjoy this music when I can't even name like five, ten songs? I don't think rappers have the same cult following that they used to have back in the day. Like, baby, I like him as an artist. We used to compare him to Wayne, but the quality of his albums are nowhere near as close. The songwriting is nowhere near as good. I feel like artists are more focused on quantity rather than the quality of their music. And I honestly don't feel that artists right now have the same fan bases that our older artists had. I think the only ones I could name are maybe Doja, obviously Cardi, and definitely Megan Thee Stallion. But I think the music industry needs to bring this back. Authenticity, great music catalogs, and overall, damn good artist. All right. So young. So so naive. (laughs) (laughs) What do you mean by that? So positive, so optimistic. I don't know. I like fan taste because they usually give them without context of the inner workings of industry stuff and it always feels so like pure and wholesome you know what yeah. I'm saying? like oh the industry to get back to good music and concepts and it's like we all wish that man we yeah. all wish that you know <sighs> I mean, all right so like i said this is an issue that every, that's plaguing everybody on the mm-hmm. fan side they're mm-hmm. feeling it the artist side they're seeing so many people mm-hmm. that become competition all these tracks without streams and we're going to talk about 
how you navigate this and move um, and build on this in the future. We're going to give you a step by step. Mm -hmm. But addressing what he said directly, I think he's talking about an era where personality shines before music. Yeah. All right. Overall brand feel shines before music and people don't even know it's happening to them. They don't know you being consumed into this space where you just rock with some how somebody looks, right? Because somebody mm-hmm. represents you. But that's the era we are. Like it's it's a tribalism era. I'm looking for somebody who looks like they would be in my tribe. Yeah. All right. I like how they move. I like how they dress. I like everything about mm-hmm. right what they seem to be doing and how they're moving. And I want to be a part of that. I feel like I could be a part of this world. This other world I don't connect to as much. Yeah. Right. And then the music gets consumed as a part of that. Right, the music is almost the story, or the uh, I don't know, the the soundtrack to that world. Right, it's the uh, it's the side salad. It's the, it's the side yeah. for sure. <laughs> it's, it's it's the house salad, right? The <laughs> generic basic ass salad. <laughs> that's how fans are taking it, even though they say they want music, music. Yeah, that's the problem. As much as we say we want this. We're acting on the other thing, and it's working. Yeah, because and going back to, like I said, how I typically feel about fan opinions is they. I, I think a lot of times they speak from, um, they speak from like noble. They speak from a noble place, right? A, a place that I think, like deep down, we all kind of wish would mm-hmm. be. But yeah. to your point, our consumer behaviors don't reflect that, right? Reflect it. Um, because then I, I was telling. I was, me and Sean were talking about this off camera where I was talking about the Mexico trip. Oh, yeah, I was waiting. I was, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's get to it. I was talking about the Mexico one. So if y'all haven't watched the episode where we were in Mexico with the since the 80s guys, um, there was a point off camera where they were challenging me on my fandom for a particular artist. I'm not going to name the artist, but this artist is an artist that is like, he came from Atlanta. He had a big moment. He's not as big anymore, but, I, but he was a, a huge part of my music development. And in the conversation, one of the guys, Barry's like, oh, if you're such a fan of him, Name three songs from him right now. And I couldn't do it. Like, I was like, <laughs> you know what I, said? I was like, he's like, name three songs and saying the words. That's what the other part where he's like, and saying the words to them right now if you're such a fan. Yeah. And I couldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? I could tell you why I like this artist as a person. I could tell you the good feelings that he brought me, you know, in that period of my life. Um, You know, I connected to, I was telling them that that was when I just moved to Atlanta. So I connected, you know, with the nostalgia of having just moved to Atlanta. All these things that he was saying has absolutely nothing to do with the music. And I think that as as a consumer, I don't think that's a bad thing, right? I don't think it's a bad thing that we're able to pick up on so many of these different things about a person that can make you like them or dislike them, regardless of how you feel about the music. I, I personally think it's a positive. Yeah. But if I'm being honest with myself, that artist that is like that isn't the only artist I feel the way about today. I have lots of artists that I like that I couldn't, I couldn't name five songs from them, to be real with you. I can maybe name one or two. But then I go beyond that. I'm just like, oh, I think they're cool. Right? I think it's a, it's a, I like him or her for some reason. And so I think all these points kind of tie together in the world. Like consumers are finding different reasons to like artists. Back in back in the day, that's all we had. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's not all we had. Like they still did personality building and things, but it, you didn't get it enough for that to be um, a main driver. It's like back then you heard an artist speak when they did a written interview or a radio interview, or maybe they got on BET or, or 106 and or 106 and Park or, or MTV or something like that. Today we can hear our artists speak every day. You know what I'm saying? They they yep. they, they tweeting, they dropping TikToks, they're, they're making Instagram. So we're able to pick up on the personality a lot faster, and the personality makes an impact a lot faster than than it used to. Bro. Um, and if we don't fuck with your personality, you're out of here. Basically, yeah. <laughs> basically, right? Like you said, the music was basically what we had to determine if we liked you or not now yeah. we have all these other things that are actually easier than listening to the music listening yeah. to the music takes more work yeah deciphering the lyrics yeah and you know doing something that's focused because i i could play the music in the background yeah and f with the energy and everything but that don't mean that i'm not working while i listen to your music not cooking or doing whatever i'm doing you yeah. know what i'm saying and i'm just sitting there and listening to it yeah right which is a whole different type of activity so paying attention is is a <laughs> it's a tough it's a heavy lift yeah. for a lot of people. Not That's fat. just the area we're in. So ah, it's good news and bad news, right? It's bad news from the standpoint of people who long for their music to be the only thing, mm-hmm. right? But it's good news 
for people who like got good personalities. That got good personalities. Or people, yeah. or people, people, or people who just at least are aware of it. Yeah, because you're able to manipulate the game once you're aware of it. If you're moving and you just expect, oh my, my music is going to be it, then psh, tough luck. Yeah. But yeah. Ryan Leslie, I remember when I interviewed him, like he said that when he was coming up, he realized that that was enough. Just being really, really dope. He got really dope because he thought that was how you won, won in music. Like all that production, all them skills, all them instruments. I'm just gonna be amazing like yeah. Prince, and then some somebody gonna find me and blow up. And you're like, oh no, I got to get out, start networking, moving yeah. and shaking. Yeah. Right. So there's look there. There's the pros and cons that that come with this era. Yeah. But the tough part, the tough part that I think everybody has to take in is no, it's not about the music anymore. No. Just about the music. A perfect example though, because this isn't music specific. Did, did you see um Selective Outrage, Chris Rock special? Most of it. All right. So there was one part of, about it. One of the few parts that I actually liked about it was he was talking about Lululemon. You mm -hmm. saw that part? Yeah. And the racist pants or yeah. whatever. Yeah. That way he's like, you got a sign on the door, like no racism or no feminine. Well, it, was, it was something. Yeah. Like, but like all these things saying that you're not racist, you're not feminist, you're not, insert all these labels. And Chris Rock's like, bro, I don't care. Like, I want the pants. What's yeah. this got to do with pants? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then he was like, well, y'all with this $97 yoga pants, y'all racist. I mean, y'all don't like somebody, poor people, right? He's like, give <laughs> yeah. me $20 racist pants over $100 non-racist <laughs> non -racist pants, right? And that's the era, though. That's exactly what we're dealing with, yeah. where people want all these labels. Because there's some people who are like, like, bro, what's this got to do with anything? Like, I'll pay for the messaging. Right. People will pay for the messaging. Yeah. Right. So although some people are kind of like that, Especially in their specific area of expertise and things that they care about. Your crap, you're probably like this, like this shit doesn't matter. Mm. But most of the world isn't <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, oh, yeah, is this something that I can agree to? Remember, the tribalism, mm -hmm. right? This sounds like messaging that fits in my tri into my tribe. Because mm -hmm. I'm the same way. I, I'm, I'm one of those like, like, what does this have to do with anything? You know what I mean? Like as a black person, I'll be seeing signs mm -hmm. like, like that's, that's for us or whatever. And I'm just like, I don't know, bro. Like. Mm -hmm. It kind of feels weird that we even talking about this right now. <laughs> yeah, it's like, man, these fries, twenty dollars, man. I don't think you really do support me like you said. Yeah, you do. how much does my black life really matter? You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't even give me fries if my black life really matter. You know, so. I should be free. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna take me out, bro? Don't make me pay twice. <laughs> but like this, like this is the legitimate era that we live in. It is about your message, and people want that because people, in some ways, want to know if they are even comfortable. Or can be comfortable listening to you. Are yeah. you safe? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I, I think the the realization I made maybe like two years ago was that everything today people feel like is a is a representation of them. What I wear mm -hmm. represents me in one way or another, what I listen to, what I watch, what I talk about. And I don't think artists a lot of times think about that a lot, right? Like people gravitate towards you or move away from you because you might represent something they don't want to be affiliated with or, or do want to be affiliated with, right? Like you are a part of their expression, yep. right? So if I walk into a room, if I walk into a party and J. Cole is playing, that tells me a lot about the room I'm walking into. Versus if I walk into that same room and like Lil Baby's playing, that tells me a lot about what I'm about to get into, right? Maybe the type of people I'm about to deal with or what's about to transpire at this party, you know what I'm saying? And then the J. Cole party would just be sick in general. J. Cole party would be crazy. They would tell me a lot. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, leave. <laughs> I mean, you throw some Katy Perry on that change things again, right? It completely changes the vibe, bro. <laughs> like, so it's like, that's something that and I've even seen it with us. You know what I'm saying? People talk about our country. Like, oh, you guys like represent these things that maybe we maybe never even blatantly say it, but like, yeah. that's what they're taking away from it. And that's why they choose to support or tell people about us. Speaking you know? of, perfect example. Um, a couple episodes ago, I had on that that Tommy shirt or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And somebody in the comments was like, "I can't believe you wearing this brand. They don't yeah. like black people." Yeah. I'm like, first of all, bro, I just throw shit on. Man. I'm not, <laughs> shit was in the closet. I, I'm not like one of those people who like overthink every single brand. Like, all right, there's some real strong polarizing brands where I right, like, oh, okay, yeah. I probably not. But like for the most part, whatever, bro. Um, second, like 
I don't know, to my knowledge, that whole thing was like actually a myth and came out to be a myth, not a direct uh, thing, the thing that he was trying to reference and say that that guy doesn't like black people. But even so, bro, all right, I'm wearing it. I'm not aware that people are going to be perceiving me. Mm-hmm. I am aware as a marketer, but I'm not thinking about it because sometimes, you know, it's, a lot of times we still don't think of ourselves like mm-hmm. that, right? Like yeah. somebody yeah. who's trying to build a brand influencer in, in that in yeah. that way, yeah. which we can do better at at times, you know what I mean? Because we, we know what it is at we this got, point. We got our issues. You yeah, know? You know, we ain't perfect. Yeah, just like we, we tell y'all, right? <laughs> <laughs> we we know people are watching and picking up on these cues after they make small comments about like oh, haircuts yeah. and beards some, and shit like that. Somebody was in the comment. I had on this uh t shirt from I went to see Uno the activist uh-huh. like two weeks ago. Uh-huh. It's the t shirt I got the the black shirt. What's well, the episode where I got the black t shirt on with the Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody in the comments, oh Corey Devil worshiper or some shit. I'm like, bro, I just like the show. Oh, man. I didn't see that coming. Yeah, he didn't say that. I don't want to put the, those words in their mouth. It was in that same spectrum, that spectrum. You know, of the, the <laughs> Illuminati conversation. I'm like, nah, bro, I just thought the shirt was hard. I, yeah. I, he, he had a cool set. You know, I, I, I like supporting artists and buying things at their show. <laughs> I needed a shirt to wear that day. I hadn't did laundry <sighs> yet. You know what I'm saying? It was on my bed clean. See? But why not? But we, I ain't. Can't, we can't live in those days no more, bro. <laughs> the old saying. days, bro. All the shirts I used to get for free and shit. Like, you just throw shit. <laughs> Like Those it. are done, bro. <laughs> People start demeaning thing, man. You wear it and you don't realize you're pro- projecting a meaning you didn't know you were projecting. You're like, oh, shit. Yeah. It means something completely different. Like, it goes back to me. My first, like, hardcore experience was still, I was, like, 16. I was wearing this Sean John shirt, and it had a fist on it. And the teacher was like, what is that? What is it? Like, why are you wearing that shirt? And I'm like, what you mean? And then she's like, yeah, that shirt. I'm like, yeah, this shirt. It was a fist. Okay, cool, whatever. And she's like... Like, nah, you don't know. Like, blah, blah, blah. and turns out, oh, she sees black power fist. First time I ever hear this shit in my life, she sees it as like some kind of like, Tip. I don't like white people, yeah. anti authority. And then I then I start realizing there's white people that think the Black Panthers are like evil and stuff like that. Never hearing that where I come from in my neck of the woods. You know yeah. what I mean? And first of all, I wasn't even thinking that deep. Like, I wasn't like. Cause I didn't, I didn't relate it to Black Power. I didn't relate it to Black Panthers. I didn't relate it to nothing. I was just like, this is a black and white shirt. You know what I mean? This guy's fist looked kind of cool. And more importantly, I got the shit for like three dollars because it was like a deep, deep clearance sale at Macy's, and that's yeah. really the only yeah. reason I got it. It's a, that time <laughs> of my life, I was like, hey, I don't really care for Sean John, Sean John like that. But I was like, eh, some people do, and this is cheap. Well, <laughs> well how old were you? And I got it. I was like, I'm thinking 16. I know I was in high school. Oh, no, you knew better. You knew what you were doing. Bruh, I did not. <laughs> I swear to God, I did not. I, I thought you was like nine or something. Like, no, nah, hey, bruh. No, nah. <laughs> nah, see, now when I was more like, <laughs> when I was nine, I was walking around Georgia State campus with my brother, and people were like all day saying, oh, man, I fuck with a hat, or like laughing or whatever. And Come to find out, at the end of the day, I took off the hat because my brother just put the hat on my head. <laughs> and it was like, you ever seen, I know you've seen on the bathroom sign, right? You know how they have like the little avatar of the man? Yeah. So it was the avatar of the man. And then he didn't have a head and it was like on the ground and it said, need more head. Uh-huh. And I was just going around all day with that on my head. I was like, oh, damn. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> That's sick. That's... Hey, bro. Oh, yeah. I, like I said, bro, I ain't mind just throwing shit on, man. I was like, <laughs> I, I could go over younger. I was probably like five. I had on this Freak Nick shirt with all these cartoons with big butts yeah, and stuff like yeah. that on the caddies and stuff like that. Yeah. Had that on. Wasn't thinking a thing of it. You know what I mean? I don't know how I got my shirt dirty, but my uncle gave me a shirt. And, you know, my uncle, my uncle, but my mom saw me. When I got home, she was like, boy, what the hell you got? A freak nigga shirt? <laughs> like you a freak, Sean? Hey, hey, you know, whatever. So like, but all that, like that that type of like just moving around freely, like we said, yeah. it got way deeper implications yeah. today than it ever has, right? Like those yeah. are like small blips, but like niggas can ruin their careers. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. If you were like a, a influential child, you know what I'm saying? And you had did that, it would have been over for you. Yeah. Like, it would have been over with. And yeah. like, that's the hard part about it too, is that 
I think is a, a, a blessing and a curse sometimes. Like I think it is a blessing that the internet has allowed people to share so many different experiences and perspectives. And I, I learn about things I just never would have thought about if it wasn't it's for nice. like a TikTok or it's YouTube. Okay. But then at the same time, <laughs> you walking on eggshells all the time because you never, like you said, you never, to your point, you never know. You don't know what you don't know. And you might say something, pick something up because you think it's cool. That shit hit the wrong section of the internet. Wrong section. And just like that, you over with and you don't even you don't even know why you over with. You know, I so. hate that shit too. Cause people are so self-centered. They're like, yo, dog, that shit don't even mean that same thing where I'm from. Yeah. Like over here, it's a good thing. And over there, y'all offended. <laughs> Cause it means something else. It's like, I'm not even aware. You gotta at least give a brother time to like be acclimated. Yeah. It's like, hey man, can you now, you want me to understand that I got to change my ways for you or whatever, or be a little bit more, but you got to at least come to understanding that I didn't mean yeah, to me, offend you in the first place. Give me room to grow and learn. Yeah, from my, yeah. We don't, we, and I, I do think, I do feel for artists today in that way. I do think artists of like the 90s, 80s, 2000s, like we gave them way more room for error. Like they way could, more. they could like smoke crack and, and beat their wife and then be at a, a sold out show the next week and fans like, oh my God, well, he made whatever. Like, this is amazing. Today, bro. Maybe a little bit too much leeway. <laughs> too much leeway. No, I don't think it's, you know, I don't think it's great in all aspects. But uh, I'm saying like, just to drop yeah, like, like. No, nah, yeah. I was, I think that sometimes the artists back then might've been a little worse because they could get away with it. You know what I'm saying? Today, right. artists are always on extras about like, will I get away with it? You know what I'm saying? Like, cause yeah. so many people are watching and paying attention. So. I, I feel for artists in that way, bro. You're walking on eggshells a lot more. Sometimes you represent things that you don't mean to represent and vice versa. But these are, sadly, to your point, things you have to be aware of if you yeah. want to be an artist today. Like, you going to, the, the shit going to hit the fan one day eventually, whether you're ready for it or not, you know? Like, who was it? Uh, I think it might have been the since the 80s thing. Remember, Barry was like, do y'all ever think about when y'all going to fuck up? And I was like, I think about it all the time, man. <laughs> like, I think about it all the time. Me and Sean got to bet on who is going to be first. I think it's going to be Sean personally. Oh, yeah. I 100% think it's going to be you. It's going to be you, man. I think, I think I'm the easy target, but it's going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. I, yeah, I, I 100% think it's going to be me. Because I, I grew up getting in trouble for saying shit. So I'm just accustomed to it, bro. I'm still going to probably feel misunderstood and be like, bro, I didn't mean that. But oh, well. And, and just take it on the chin. I didn't know flip flops meant that. <laughs> I mean, I wait, even to the like the the all this point because uh, the thing I did also want to touch on with the Ray Daniels conversation of artists getting lazier, I I think is I understand why it's easier to, it's easier you know what I'm saying it's like to the 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 OGs points not him but just them in general right it's like back in the day you want to make a song you got to get your ass up and go to the studio right mm -hmm. you're in the studio for however many hours. Um, you got to go down to the, the local press shop and get your CDs pressed up. If we fast forward to 2000, you still got to put some mortars in, you know what I'm saying, to get the shit out. You got to find a distribution partner. You got to do all these things that were like, just for the song to even hit mm -hmm. the shelf, you probably had already went through about 10, 15 steps worth of work already. Mm -hmm. Today, it's maybe three, four steps between making the song and having it online, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So. To the point you made earlier, there are a lot more people who feel like, oh, I could just hop in this. It's twenty dollars a year for a distro kid account, or however much it is, twenty a month, twenty a year. I don't know. Don't don't kill me for that. Twenty dollars for distro kid account. I've seen lots of videos online about here's how to make a studio set up for less than five hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? So if yeah. we assume, I'm assuming a large majority of that thirty eight million of people that probably did that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They just needed a quick hop in. And so if you can become an artist today, for essentially less than a thousand dollars is going to flood the marketplace right anytime people especially for a business model where for such a long time we saw so many people make a lot of money from it or we mm -hmm. felt like we saw a lot of people do it right so it's yeah. like think about any time a new business opportunity is introduced and then the the price to get into that business cheapens. there's always a lot of people that flood it and the quality diminishes we're just seeing that with music now right we for 20 30 shit longer than that for decades watched all these artists make so much money and then just one year it becomes less than a thousand dollars to hop in the game yeah everybody wants to hop in the game you know what i'm saying shit i should i'd be thinking all the time man should i become a rep maybe i missed the maybe i missed the block you know what i'm saying missed the calling missed it missed it bro but so i think i do think that artists are lazier in the sense but i, I understand like how they got into that place all right so one we we are going to get to how you build out of this oh yeah but let's I'll harp on that point for the first thousand streams. <laughs> <laughs> you 100 percent 
have to expect people to be lazier just because we know that just proportionally, there's always some people who are lazy and some people who aren't. Yeah, 100%. Right? But then the environment dictates the amount of laziness that can cut or not. All right? I see where you're going with this. So everybody still has that incentive. Yeah. But if I have to pay X amount of dollars in this studio, ooh, I don't want to waste all that much time, so I got to use this wisely. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to prepare on the front end as much as possible. I might try that one time and be like, well, I just wasted a lot of time and ain't it. Create one song. Eh, eh. So yeah. let me... <laughs> Figure out my lyrics, hear, hear the beats, whatever, like do all that stuff. And then, oh, when I have to, to try to get my music in the stores, I have to print them on physical CDs. And once that's done, it's done. Like brother say no refunds when he like type my shit out, type out my, yeah. my CD name and all this stuff. And the covers is already done. It's a sunk cost. So you literally don't have the ability to make as many. Well, you have the ability, but the costs are so high, it forces people to be on their P's and Q's mm -hmm. a lot more. Yeah. Now, like you said, cost so cheap. I go in my room, I do it. I don't have to deal with nobody. So nobody's making me move fast enough. I could go eat. I can play a game. I could take a, a nap or whatever. And then nobody's forcing me to create music fast enough. There's no pressures. And then when I put it out, like, all right, if I get zero streams, there's no feedback. I might just throw another one out there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah. the, the risk uh, is, is so low. It is an environment today that allows things to be lazier, right? Mm -hmm. But that's, I, I like to implore artists to look at the world at large. <laughs> this is this is just where we are, man. You know, if, if you want to date a young lady today, mm -hmm. you know, wherever you live, there were probably less women that you were attracted to per square mile. Okay. Right. Okay. Than what you see today. Yeah. All right. Everybody has your type. So whatever you're attracted to. And when you come across that, now you're like, oh, man, I want her or I want a shot at her. So you, one, you got to probably look whatever your best is for your personal brand, smell whatever your best is. And then when y'all go out, I got to show up with my best face on and go on a specific type of date. Today. Hey, swipe, swipe, swipe. I'm like, oh, bro, she want to go to a restaurant. I just want to go to the park. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me, and the park is, can, can be a great creative thing. Yeah, so let me not shit park. park. Yeah, let me not shit park. park. I got great food. Yeah, I mean, let me run that back. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like, let me, let me do something that's lower effort. I don't even want to invest that much in the front end because I got so many other shots that I can take, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I'm not so worried about this. I got access of to people that I'm attracted to within a certain square radius without me even having to leave the house, I can see them and just find them that way, yeah. right? Where I can yeah. look look on Instagram. There's all these different ways. So people are even investing less, even on that side of things. And I hear it all the time. Thank God that I'm not dealing with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but- man, it's hard out in these streets, I, I, I hear. It's hard in these streets. I hear, <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, it's the same. So imagine taking that same type of mentality and you're, an artist feeling like there's a lack of value shown, then you apply that to a dating scenario yeah. or you apply that to movies. Actors and actresses feel the same. Mm -hmm. Like All these different categories are feeling the same and it's just coming down to the fact that there's less attention, more content, mm -hmm. right? More information and easier access. So why am I going to go hard and invest much when I could just wait for the thing to pop up? As much as we believe in this strategy and use this strategy, it's the same mentality. Yo, let the song bubble up and then we invest heavy, mm -hmm. right? Don't put a lot of money in the music, let the audience decide and then you run it up. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to invest. Let them tell me, let them pick me first and show me they're committed. Yeah. And then I'm gonna put it in. Yeah. All of it's the same. And the problem is, like I said, we can want one thing, but like we said earlier, what's the behavior? Well, the behavior works right today to treat it that way mm -hmm. which is why people keep treating it that way mm -hmm. right so can't knock it now it's just about how you build up out of it and two of the keys to build up out of it comes down to brand and community right in the space where you need to separate yourself mm -hmm. right how do you because there is plenty of content 
Bump all these artists that are trash, that don't market their stuff. There's a lot of artists that are great mm-hmm. and are marketing themselves, yep. are building fan bases or getting a lot of attention, right? But there's still competition and there's still difficulty in like not only um, standing out from the pack, but actually monetizing. Yeah. That's the real thing we want to get down to. Yeah. So Jacory and I put some together some of the key points and steps that you have to keep in mind when it comes down to building up out of this space and what we've been doing with artists so you can separate yourself from the pack and build beyond. All right. Number one, when we're talking about building community, collect information. Yep. Now, I know it sounds simple to some of y'all, but I literally saw somebody in the comments like a couple weeks ago. Does it really um, become helpful to collect emails and phone numbers? Yes, it does. For real. 100%. And I know many of you guys have heard this information for a while. We're not going to harp on that point specifically, but literally collect emails, phone numbers, all that stuff straightforward. Now, how do you go about it? That's the more interesting point. And we'll get into that some of that as we talk about these other things. But part two is your mission and your brand values. We got to know what we're getting into. Mm -hmm. We got to know what we care about. Right? We talked about personality is one of those leading things or just that front facing aspect is not just the music. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, it's not the music at all. Hey, I fuck with them, but I can't even recite three songs. All right. That's the reality that Jacory just, <laughs> you know, spoke for himself and got called out for. But I think it's true for many of us. Right. Because what's the difference between that and you saying, I like this actor or I like this just person and you actually do not know him. There isn't a difference. Not to me. You, you watched a couple <laughs> movies or you heard a couple songs and you talking about you like them. But you don't know them for real. Yeah. Like <laughs> who they are behind closed doors. It's the same thing. So we've all shown that we had the capacity to be that way. We just haven't been in an environment where it really affected artists like that. So again, for me to feel deeper for you, want to be a part of your tribe, then I have to know what is your tribe. Mm-hmm. And you got to define that for your audience. You want to speak more on that? We're about to get into actually no yeah essentially it's it's like the I don't know I look at it like well, who, who's the crowd of people you want to attend your party you know what mm. I'm saying it's the best way to look at it right yeah. like like to the point earlier you want the golf kids there you want you know what I'm saying I don't know who you want to show up to your party it's essentially yeah. how I, I look at the, the brand messaging um, and I know one of the big things that we talked about in that is also like how do you want your community to act within your mission and brand values, right? Like what are the rules and boundaries and regulations of being a part of your world? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and th- there was a point I was talking to like a, a client about a couple of days ago that I, I think does kind of tie into this. She was asking brand questions and things. And so the way that I've come to understand it is like you as an artist, you are essentially building like your, your MCU, right? Your, your, your Marvel universe, right? And so if you look at Marvel, Marvel doesn't give you the whole plot in one movie. Mm. They give you the plot broken down across multiple movies, TV shows, spinoff, and things like that, right? But if you're a real Marvel fan, you're picking up on different points of the plot based on these little things that you that you watch, that you watch and that you see. And then if you bring it to, I guess, like real world, kind of like the branding of like Marvel and like them as a company, like they they do things in real life. They make the actors speak and, and talk in certain ways and in interviews that reflect whatever the brand is. That is essentially what you're trying to do as an artist. Like, what are all? What is my big brand mission? Right? How am I going to take this six hour plot and break it down into to ten movies? You know what I'm saying? That that my fans can consume in bite sized ways. It still gets the message across. And then how am I on the business side going to reflect that? You know what I'm saying? What re- regulations rules am I going to make the people under me or, or a part of me? You know what I'm saying? Kind of re- reflect so that my world is accurately represented. Mm-hmm. everywhere that it goes and it's kind of talked about yeah i like that because the perfect example that i mentioned earlier was tyler the creators camp vlog now right yep drake came out drake left drake, <laughs> drake did leave. for those of y'all who don't know <laughs> do not know drake came out at camp vlog now that's tyler creators festival and he got booed 
Now, the reason he got booed is multiple folds, right? One, they came for Frank Ocean yeah, and received Drake. Drake is not Frank a- Ocean. He is not Frank Ocean. Drake is Drake, <laughs> but he's not he's Frank not Ocean. not Frank Ocean. All right? So when you talk about the marketing, the rules, and the energy that you're attracting people with, and then you do a little switcheroo, mm-hmm. like they didn't even give anybody in the same category. Now, Frank is a tough person to compare to, right? He really is in his own lane in many ways in terms of his perception and, and being that level of success with that type of style of music. But there's close, there's people closer to Frank Ocean than Drake, right? Yeah, I, I can see how they, I can see why they thought Drake though, but I agree with that. It was, yeah. There's much better people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, anytime Drake is that level where you almost think, hey, I, Drake. He, he right? crosses enough circles, right, you right. think, yeah. But <laughs> you advertise a twerk fest and you came Kirk Franklin with Kirk Franklin. And that ain't right, right? That's the problem. Like, it's, why am I sitting down listening to this sermon? And I ain't dressed for this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I ain't come to see all these clothed people. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, this is just not what we're here for. So when you switch up that vibe, what you just marketed for, it's an issue. Mm-hmm. But that's how powerful that is, right? Mm-hmm. And then you go to the next level that that happened. Tyler, the creator, and his audience. Mm-hmm. Tyler, the creator, the rules, the, the boundaries that he set were pretty open. And, and that type of energy was the energy that Tyler's always projected. Yep. Like if young Tyler would boo Drake in a moment like that. 100%. And he was like, yo, you know, you got to respect that. Da, 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 but that's not the brand that Tyler himself built mm-hmm. and the energy that he's attracted people with. Right. Yep. yep. And that's not even a shot at Tyler in that moment. Specifically, it's more so. A, a highlight of something he's done very well yeah. in curating that particular type of audience. Yep. Because there's some audiences, believe it or not, that wouldn't even just feel comfortable booing Drake. Like, they wouldn't feel comfortable booing, and then they definitely wouldn't feel comfortable um, booing Drake because they just feel like the, because of the clout he mm-hmm. has or whatever, whatever, all these mm-hmm. different reasons. Mm-hmm. Tyler's audience built a I don't give a fuck attitude who you are. Whatever, yeah, whatever, exactly. Right? Well, if, you, if we got smoke for you, you're getting it. That is what it <laughs> is, right? So that's great because he built that specific community. What does your community look like? Now, when we number three, we can get even deeper into that because number three is give them space to hang out. Yep. Whether that's digitally or in a physical space. Now, a perfect example of this, I'm going to start at the top. The Dreamville Fest. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't go to the recent Dreamville Fest, but I was talking to Piff Marty recently. Shout out to Piff Marty. And he was there and he said it was really, really dope. You got some people told me it was 30,000. Some people said it was 50,000. Some people said it was like 70,000 people there. There's just a lot of people there. Yeah, either way. Right? Either way it goes. <laughs> and Piff said everybody there was like on the same type of time, same type of energy. Mm-hmm. He made it sound like it was like a good energy, positive energy, like it was J. Cole's values at scale. Yeah. Right. That community he built. When you can do something like that, attract one, your own fan base, and then also curate around that because this is your taste, mm-hmm. right? Because you're making those decisions, brand values, and making sure everybody is in line with that and, and your messaging, and you bring everybody out for a specific energy, that's a big win. All right. And a lot of these concerts have issues when things overlap and you attract, you don't do a good job at curating on the front end. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because even some artists that you might have on a bill, they can do multiple energies. But so if you can, you can throw them on your bill and they can attract that other side of their crowd that you don't necessarily want there. Mm-hmm. Right. So how do you do that? Jay Cole is somebody who's been very, very, very good at like amplifying like his type of community, you already kind of know what it is. You, you're not, it's not there to be necessarily flashy, maybe cool and expressive and flash your creativity, but it's not the flash flexy way um, in terms of the stereotypes that we like to think. Mm-hmm. All right. I got more money. I got more money. Um, like all of those things have been set. All right. And then another activation though, on the top end was Travis Scott. 
right? Oh yeah, the uh, the the Fortnite thing. The Fortnite thing. Mm. So that's the digital. Less about the conversation of those mission and brand values. J Cole did a great job at that, but this is just for this single example of giving people a physical space to hang out and community to come together. So you have physically Dreamfest, J Cole. On the top end, you got Travis Scott, Fortnite, digitally. Then you bring that down to an earlier level in process. Well, you got pop-ups in mm -hmm. general. Yep. A lot of artists have done pop-ups, right? So it's easier to accomplish. You come in, you have this day where you can either profitably or at least break even. You know what I mean? Getting only a hundred people to show up, yeah. right? Whatever that number looks like, all right? Um, we got an artist that we're working with right now. She just hit me up saying, I think she sold 75 tickets for a hundred dollars mm -hmm. or whatever sold out in small space, right? There's these things that you can do, these small community driven events that you can do that will allow you to build. And we'll get deeper into that and cover more of that stuff later. But you can sell and do numbers like that. Mm -hmm. Seven. Five people, a hundred dollars each, small curated event, and they're happy while there's still new people who want to come, but they couldn't make it because it was uh sold out. Yep. Right. So now you got other people who know that yo, when I do this, I sell out. So next time I gotta like make sure I come because I might miss. Yeah. All right. So you got that. And then we talked about people like um Tom, uh, who else did you say? Uh Kari. Kari. Um, like their discords, yeah, like small digital community spaces to meet up, right? Those things are great places because when your community doesn't have a way to hang out, then it's hard to truly build community around you. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And community is important too because I think there needs to be space for the fans to make memories and build positive feelings towards you without you having to do any of the work. Yep. Right. So um, like I had an artist tell me a story two weeks ago about how he had this fan that met his wife in like a, the comments of like one of his videos. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which I thought was pretty cool. But he's like, they just he made a comment. She made a comment back. It kind of went back and forth. He told me it was a point where they were breaking up and they had him in the middle of it. You know what I'm saying? They was DMing him. It was crazy, but it was a cool story. Right. It's like, Damn. That, so if that artist. I'm assuming, you know, goes on to marry this woman and, and you know, they, they make it work. They're always going to have these positive feelings associated with him. And he didn't even do nothing. He just made the post. They, they made that happen in the comments. Right. And I I see that all the time with discord groups. Right. One of the best things about going to our specific shows and festivals, festivals is that you meet people that, are, you know, y'all have something in common. And you might make some friends. Right. And so it's like all these different experiences that will benefit you as an artist that don't necessarily have anything to do with you. Like you didn't put them together right you didn't make them meet you didn't make these connections happen now you talk about as your audience grows then that shit starts happening tenfold a hundredfold right sometimes a thousandfold and you're getting all the goodwill back right you're curating yeah so, right there's people are going to say like man i met my wife at a at a at a, at a Corey show you know what i'm saying like shit, I, I mean I, I, bro whatever you got to sell i'm with it you know what i'm saying because i have yeah. this this feeling this feeling associated with you so that to me is the, the most important part discord is cool because that can happen whether or not you're awake, right? And it's a, it's a easier setup for most artists. I'm um, a easier learn for most people, but like that's the big idea behind it. Like you want the people congregating in these spaces so that they can build, they can they can make memories around you that don't necessarily have to do it exactly with you. Exactly. And this is the difference between fans and community. Yeah. If they if you have a bunch of fans that never meet, then they're fans. If those fans can then meet and share experiences with each other. Now you have a community. Yep. Right. And the whole goal is to build. I call this passive fan base generation. Right. Because you get the fans to start creating new fans for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they have this environment that you curated. You were the tastemaker for it. But once it's there, it starts to live and breathe beyond your own ideas. They yeah. start having ideas. They say, hey, I want to do this again. Can you bring it back? Yeah. And then they're going to bring some of their other friends because they thought it was so dope, right? Yeah. Like, that's what you want. And it's easier to do that in non-music experiences than it is in music experience, right? Yeah. Like, okay, if I like this song, then I can share this song, true, right? But there's a limitation to how much you're going to get that happening, right? And 
if I want to go to your concert, yeah, that can happen too. But the concert experience isn't usually a shared experience to the same extent, especially when it t- um, comes to meeting new people. Mm-hmm. The way most people throw them. Festivals are closer yeah. to that, but then yeah. that's not your show. That's your, you know what I mean? That's a whole thing, unless you're the one curating it. But if you create a type of show that have in, has an energy beyond the music, right, where it is a little bit more relaxed and people are there and sitting around, not just like standing, looking at you in a dark room, then you can curate more. If you do experiences far beyond music itself, but still curated, book clubs, uh, I don't know, right? You can insert a lot of different things because I don't want to talk on some of the stuff that um, some clients and people I know are doing right now. Mm. But if you do stuff that's beyond the music, it's easy to market because people still want to have experiences, mm. period, right? And there's a specific experience that they think about when they do a concert, but I still want to go out on dates. So if you're an R&B artist, right, and you can have a good vibe for me to take my girl out or something like that, then dope. Like, remember, that was one of the things I noted about that Jeezy concert. I was yeah. like, oh, man, I could get this. is like It's not on Valentine's Day, but I could get like Valentine's Day uh, points on it. That's on a Friday. Uh, she going to get to dress up. You know what I'm saying? That's points for me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like all these different things I noted. I had a whole list, right? Networking, there's a lot of things. But that's what I'm doing, right? I'm not just yeah. like, oh, this is going to see young Jeezy. Literally, I saw Jeezy the month before those, no, two months before those tickets were out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I thought about how he positioned that specific experience. It was a higher end black tie, you know, a, attract a certain mold of people. Mm-hmm. It was a whole different thing, right? Mm-hmm. So, that allows you also to hit your fans in more ways than one. Yeah. Right. So I could come here and be an opener for Corey's show and I could come back the next month and have no more new music released, but have a different experience that I'm bringing you around and you will still come to my shit. Yeah. And you right? can you can appeal to different types of your fans. Right. Because that, yes. that setup is going to appeal to a probably older, more paid section of his fan yep. base. And then. As an artist, if you're aware of these different communities and people that are paying attention to you, you can create experiences for those different pockets, right? Right. You know? so. You got some people, like, I, right, yeah, bro, I fuck with your music hard, but I can't be out that late because I got a family. It's going to be harder for me to get in that vibe. Mm-hmm. And, but so if you create this other version that still makes sense, it depends on your brand, right, for your brand, but mm-hmm. it might go along with your brand and then speak to a different um, part of your your fan base who their parents or they got a different lifestyle because different parts of your fan base live a certain lifestyle. You want to be able to keep your, your vibe consistent, right? Don't cater or pander too heavily because they still already rock with you, right? You don't yeah. got to change who you are, yeah. but it's just creating a new space that they can exist in, afford, right? Make it to in general, right? On the other side, another idea we've been talking about for a long time and we participated or helping people in was just doing like video game tournaments and stuff like that oh yeah same idea all right you got fans who are now playing each other they're engaged around something watching it's your tournament but they're watching it because uh watching other people because of you so now you're not even doing work and you're building fans that's the passive fan base generation Mm -hmm. that i talk about right yeah like people do celebrity basketball games all of those things are like achieving that goal of community by bringing people around and you don't get community without bringing people together yeah you just can't otherwise you have fans and fans are great but community is better even better and that's how we begin to monetize so you demonetize right in today's era when we talk about standing out there's an artist that will have more views but not hit as hard as people who have stronger brands there will be people who have stronger brands and more people that legitimately love them that aren't making as much Mm -hmm. as people who have stronger communities Mm -hmm. i got a stronger community with less people and you got fans that would be a bigger community but you just aren't doing the work bringing them together because community creates more monetization opportunities we just touched on that right there's more purchasing um put into it because i'm just showing in different ways and i'm a part of this i get a sticker to say no labels necessary i get a shirt to say no labels necessary you know what i'm saying like this all these things just to show it's a part of my lifestyle, right? Beyond my primary consumption route. So there's like community 
is the way. And one thing you got to do with those folks is communicate to them frequently. So let's review. So far, we got collected data on yep. these people. All right. Because you got to know how to get out to them. You got to know who they, they are. Secondly, you got to have a mission, which is the more important one. But I say collect data just because people need their reminder mission brand values you got to have something that you're standing for what are we who are we what are the rules of this place and let me opt in or opt out mm -hmm. don't be afraid to allow people to opt out number three give us a space to congregate at you have to give fans a way to meet each other right and you'll have people who aren't even fan fans begin to become deeper fans just because you create this other experience right Number four is communicate frequently. You have to have a way where they are still seeing you. And and also when ways that you speak to them directly. Mm -hmm. All right. So I still need to see you remember that you exist. And I still need some way that not only you can um, I can communicate to them, but fans are able mm -hmm. to communicate with each other. Now, it doesn't have to be a daily basis, something like a discord. Right. It could be I got a monthly show or I got a, a yearly event, but then you have ways that you build up to it and remind people of it the before, the before the after. There's ways to do it where it doesn't mean this is like a daily task, but you have to have some level of ongoing communication and building. Yeah, yeah. that's one of the biggest fuck ups most artists make. They don't talk to the community, man. Don't talk to They're them. Just, just there. Radio silent. Yeah. Now, some of y'all don't want them to talk back. And I get it. I really do get it. And you can do it without talking back to people. Yeah. But you still do, if possible. I don't say you still need to do, but if you can, and if it's possible, you will find benefit for having deeper experiences with some of those people. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, back and forth communication. But maybe you reserve that for the physical event certain times happen on a live Q and A or like open period. So you're not allowing people to text you back and forth. Hey, I just want, in terms of this text fans, this is just for me to let y'all know of some important things. I'm not gonna blast y'all every single track to come out if I'm dropping weekly, but when I'm having a big show, there's a big moment or maybe monthly, I might text you something, let you know where I'm coming from. But hey, same for y'all to text me back. When y'all wanna talk to me, all right, then we'll do this Q and A or yeah. I will do these meetups and things like that. That's fine. You just need to establish the rules. And that's where we go back to number two, right? What are those, that mission? What are those brand values? And rules really could be its own thing when we really get down to it now that I think about it. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. rules can go deep. You know what I mean? It would be a little, even beyond just regular brand values. It's just <laughs> me like, hey, bro, don't leave me alone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is how we at. But you get the rest of the community to understand. And then they'll support it. So one yeah, fan of you like, he, man, he didn't respond to me. And you trying to blast me on social media. But then I already set the tone with my fans. And they're like, yeah, bro, he's a regular person. He got life. He got this. He got that. Or, you know what I mean? He got a family or something. Then what do you expect? So the fans, like, just lean into me. And, they, and, and they'll defend for me, right? Mm -hmm. If I establish those type of rules, right? But last but not least, number five, reward your community. Show love to your community in public, right? Not that person that you just take out at nighttime and friends don't know about them. We talking about out there in public, whether it's, yo, this happened with my community. I, I had the pop up, right? Y'all came out. Show that on social media, mm -hmm. right? Because then you have some fans that get jealous. Yep. Like, whoa. Whoa. He hugged you? That's crazy. Yeah, hey, for real. <laughs> hey, I got to pull up to the next one. Yeah. I didn't even know you were giving out hugs at these events. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? I didn't know that was possible. Like Chris Brown with the- uh, Oh, the pictures? Oh, uh, yeah, them pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, whoa, I didn't know I could get that close. I've heard about the idea of doing meetups, but whoa, I, I get to like, it's going to be like that, right? That's a different type of experience. And yeah. I can see myself in that position. All right, so like you advertise it, because also then you show that you give love. Fans will appreciate giving you giving love to other fans vicariously. Some of them will say, oh, man, I just really appreciate that you're so appreciative of us, even though the interaction didn't have anything to do with you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like so you show that love to your community publicly. It'll be a signal of how important you are 
or and how important the community is to other community members. Yeah, and that's big because you know I've, we talked about it before in the podcast, but you know fans like to feel like if it wasn't for them individually, yes, then you would not be where you are. You know, so they like to feel like if I stop listening to you today, you falling off, right? So when you're rewarding them and you're you're doing these things, you're you're openly like feeding that feeding that that side of them. You know what I'm saying? Whether you you agree or not, you know it's a whole different thing. But you want fans to continue feeling appreciated and feeling like they are an important part of your success because that makes them want to go harder for your success, right? And then when they start to see, hey, when this artist has success, I benefit in this way, then they naturally want you to succeed more because they think about all the things they will get as a community because of you succeeding. You exactly. Know? So it, and I think it's it's very important to just continue like driving that point home with fans and making them feel like, hey, this is this is our thing. It's like giving um. I don't know. I look at it's like giving bonuses at the end of the year to employees. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, here's the base love you get for, you know, doing your job, which is in their cases just supporting me. You know what I'm saying? Then here's some extra things I want to give you to show you, like, hey man, I, I fuck with the moments you went above and beyond, and, and, and some of the other things that you did that you didn't you didn't have to do, but it really helped. You know, helped yeah. overall. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's just that simple, right? Yeah. It's just that simple. Now, there's deeper tactics of how we can do each of these execute each of these and maybe we'll get into that in a different episode but we just wanted to make sure we laid this out for you guys because again in this competitive saturated space of not just music but content as a whole life as a whole today the way the world is set up facts right if you want to keep giving people reasons to go back you have to give them something to be included into Mm -hmm. right a reason beyond just hey you're another artist with good music good music is not enough when we talk about monetizing all right so you have all the opportunities in the world that's the good news right because people are open to that these days they're actually looking how to give you money beyond the music in itself and how to get deeper into the rabbit hole but with that being said there's a feeling of yeah you don't value the music enough or that's just not enough no it's not enough to get to where you probably want to. Because that's the only thing that's to judge. It's like, well, I'm streaming. I mean, right? So I did it. But you decide that's not enough. I could say me getting some streams and 50,000 streams a month or 100,000 streams a month, that's enough for me. The problem is not that gap. The gap is you want more, right? Maybe money, notoriety, or a deeper relationship with your fans. So for that, no, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. But the opportunity does exist. With that being said, we're going to get out of here for today. Uh, if you guys want to see us get deeper into community building specifically and how you stand out today and what you're going to have to do in the future, let us know. Drop that in the comments. Go ahead and subscribe if you somehow made it this far and you never subscribed crazy. to the channel before. Crazy. Definitely crazy. <laughs> and yet again, this is another episode of No Labels Necessary. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace. Peace.